Thank you. And thank you so much for inviting me. I was excited, Abel Parker, when you uh, approached me, and I'm really happy to be here. And uh, huge congrat congratulations to the to the Cielo and to the Cielo team. It's a fantastic endeavor. Uh, I think I uh, did a tweet uh, uh, Tuesday morning where I said I was pleased to be here, the place where open access was practiced years before we began to talk about that in Europe. Now, it's always uh, a challenge to come uh, after Cameron and Jean-Claude in a panel. It's really a challenge. So, uh, what I'll uh, do uh, today is to provide you with a report from the garage or the basement uh, about uh, I'll talk about a piece of infrastructure that has been in operation for a number of years, the Directory of Open Access Journals, and I'll talk about uh, the recent changes and the plans uh, for the future in order to secure that this piece of infrastructure, uh, even in the future, can be uh, a contributor to the global awareness of the global, global collection of open access journals. So, very briefly, uh, I guess uh, many of you does, uh, yeah, know a little bit of the DOAJ, uh, about the DOAJ, but many of you uh, don't. Uh, so, a brief background. DOAJ was founded 2003, 10 years ago, uh, at Lund University as a list of open access journals. We started with 300 journals, and as you can imagine here, uh, already at this point you have uh, several hundred here in this, this part of the world, but uh, uh, relatively quickly uh, the number of open access journals in the DOAJ grew uh, uh, very fast. Uh, it was initially funded by uh, Spark and the Open Society Institute. Uh, there was additional minor grants, and uh, we introduced a funding uh, model based on sponsors and, and members in 2006. So, uh, during the first seven years or so, the number of journals grew from 3, to, uh, 300 to 8,000. Uh, but it became uh, a problem for a single university, Lund University of Sweden, to manage such a big uh, collection and to handle the expectations the growing expectations from the community as uh, open access got momentum. So uh, it was difficult to get the adequate resources, funders and libraries uh, expressed more specific demands and uh, there was an increasing backlog. So uh, there were concerns in the community, what will happen with the DOAJ? Nothing happens. So uh, the Open Access Scholarly Publishers Association uh, approached Lund University to find out what uh, could be done in order to secure that the DOAJ still could be a service for the open access movement. There were intensive discussions over two years, but uh, then late last year, 2012, an agreement was in place between Lund University and a newly formed uh, a company called Infrastructure Services for Open Access which is a community company uh, registered in the UK. So we, we managed to get this service transfer, transferred from the university to uh, 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 another setting, uh, uh, IS4OA. We took over January 1st, and uh, we had big plans. Uh, we would involve the community, respond to the demands and expectations, uh, by developing new tighter criteria, new tighter criteria for listing of the journals. Uh, we would re-engineer the back office work, speed up the process of uh, evaluating journals and uh, monitor for compliance, I'll come back to that, uh, and invite associate editors to contribute to the work. We have developed, uh, we would develop DOAJ into a significantly improved service uh, with more functionality, extending the coverage, work more closely with publishers to improve the quality of the information 
about the journals listed in the DOAJ, and we should develop uh, sustainable funding. Uh, that's not solved yet, I should say. So what have we done in the course of this, uh, the first 10 months of this year? We set up an advisory board, we, done, we did a survey, we have had an intense communication about new criteria with the community, and we have reached out to organizations and initiatives to address general issues for open access journals. This is a, a number of names from our advisory board. We have tried to combine people from the library community uh, and people from the publishing uh, for open access publishers. There might be some familiar names here. Uh, but you can at least see we try to make it uh, global uh, on the publisher side or aggregator side. We have uh, your colleagues in Mexico, Redalic, and we have Leslie John, and we have uh, others. This uh, group of distinguished experts are helping us trying to develop the DOAJ. We launched a new platform with uh, much more uh, functionality. And uh, there you see on the right the latest figures uh, from the DOAJ, uh, nearly, uh, nearly 10,000 journals, uh, more than 1.5 million article level metadata. It's important here to say DOAJ is not only a list of open access journals, it is as well a hub where publishers can upload their article level metadata. And all these data are harvested heavily by subscription agents, library catalogs, library system, uh, information system providers, and, uh, and robots. So, so it's a massive dissemination of, of records, of metadata records. Um, we have streamlined the back office. We have almost doubled uh, the uh, speed of uh, uh, adding journals. And uh, we have uh, as well removed journals, as you can see from uh, from this slide here, we have uh, removed just as many journals as we have added uh, during the last two or three months. That was before the science article, I can tell you. We did a survey among the publishers. It's a very diverse landscape. There are more than 3,000 publishers in this collection of uh, uh, nearly t uh, 10,000 journals. Uh, we sent out emails, uh, got a fair, uh, fairly good response representing more than 56% of the journals and here you see the long tail and uh, to your right of the graph at the top of the blue end is Cielo. Cielo is the single most important contributor to the DOAJ both in terms of number of journals and uh, number of article level metadata, several hundred thousand. But as you can see we have a long tail of Publishers publishing one or two journals, which is a major problem. We, uh, we got some findings from this survey. Uh, persistent identifiers is, uh, was one of the things uh, that came out of, uh, of this survey as uh, uh, an interesting thing. Uh, we asked whether your journal has uh, implemented DOIs, and you can see the numbers here, and I think they're fairly representative for the whole collection. I, I'm, minority has uh, uh, DOIs. Uh, we think this is an important problem for uh, those who are uh, building services on top of all these things. So we have uh, initiated discussions between OASPA, ENAS, PKP, Redalic, and we will very much welcome Cielo here as well because uh, they are talking uh, to Crossweb as well. We would like to facilitate that all journals could be able to implement DOIs. It's an administrative problem and it's a financial problem, and we would like to uh, solve that. Uh, another issue from the survey, was, another result uh, from the survey was uh, the response to the question of archiving. I think many of us think that archiving is a very important issue as well uh, when it comes to uh, journals in general. But here uh, we can see only a minority of the open access journals has an arrangement. 40% indicated, no, not really interested. Uh, but. Uh, to the question whether they would be interested if we could f fix an uh, efficient solution for them, uh, 
they would uh, be happy to uh, participate in that. Uh, the way that many, many journals lack the financial and technical resources to go beyond just publishing uh, the content, they haven't addressed the archiving issue, but would like to do so. So, as well here, we are reaching out to organizations to try to solve this problem as well. Because we see it as our mission with the DOAJ not to point out bad publishers, but to help smaller publishers to improve their quality, uh, both in terms of content and uh, technology. Um, we had a, a question about the metadata delivery. The majority of the journals are actually delivering article metadata to DOAJ, and there's been significant improvement uh, during the last several months, very much due to Cielo as well. Uh, so there's more than 1.5 million uh, article level metadata in the collection. We asked them as well, how uh, do you consider uh, benefits being listed? And uh, here are some quite convincing figures. Visibility, traffic, prestige, certification, uh, eligibility for support from OA publication funds, better promotion, and so forth. So uh, publishers uh, are very happy of being listed, find it important. So to, uh, one of the most important things in our work this year was to try to draft or agree on new, tighter criteria. Uh, the current set of criteria is quite short. It's based on the Budapest Open Access Initiative, basically. But uh, a lot of things has happened ten, uh, since 10 years ago. The demands are much higher from funders, much more diverse. Uh, funders would like to immediately to be able to see which journals within a specific subject uh, complies with certain criteria in terms of licensing, uh, uh, archiving, and so forth. And uh, that accounts for all other stakeholders uh, as well. Um, what we'll do with the new criteria, which will be a very long list, we'll try to uh, have a set of criteria which might reduce, uh, reduce the probability of fake or faulty publishers to come into the service, but most importantly, we will make it transparent what the publishers tell us about their service and hopefully enable the community to help us monitor for compliance. The new title criteria will be focusing on three issues, quality uh, and of course the quality openness and the delivery. Uh, quality is tricky. Um, funders and libraries and uh, researchers want to be able to judge whether a journal has a uh, whether a journal is a quality journal, and there's been a lot of discussion about this already on this conference. There's no quick fixes, as we have learned, no clear accepted definitions. We only have proxy measures. Um, the things that will go into our list of criteria will be uh, requirements as to the journals must have uh, editors and editorial boards, which uh, are easily identified. Uh, they should sp uh, specify the uh, peer review process. There should be statements about the aims, aims and scope, instructions to authors, and screening for plagiarism. Uh, at least we should know whether such is practiced. And uh, the time uh, from submission to publication should as well be uh, revealed. Openness, all the issues about licenses, readers' rights, Reuse rights, copyrights, author posting rights should be transparent and uh, information should be provided. And there's a lot of other technical uh, delivery criteria that will go into the new uh, list of, uh, in the new application form. We sent this out for public comment. And uh, we learned a lot, among other things, that our Western, European, North American services, standards, and business models are not universal. For instance, CC licenses. Uh, we said that this would be mandatory, but in many countries it's actually impossible uh, yet. Uh, we'll work with Creative Commons on, uh, to see how we can do uh, about that. We uh, re recommended that uh, the journals uh, were registered in the Sherpa Romeo service, uh, which is very well known in Europe, uh, but not all over the world, we learned. 
we promoted DOIs, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we learned that there are other persistent identifier services out there, not as good as uh, Crossref's DOIs, I would argue, but uh, as I indicated, we'll talk to uh, Crossref in order to facilitate something here. Uh, we were asking for archiving arrangements. Now we'll, uh, we'll still do that, but we'll try to facilitate it even. Uh, we promoted that formats should be mas machine readable in the first draft. Uh, now we, are, we have backed a little bit on this and just say we will ask for specification. We promoted the open access spectrum, which is a tool developed by PLOS, Spark, and OASPA. It is not very well known. And uh, we will, uh, no, our new criteria will have a workaround on these issues. The process highlighted the dilemma uh, that we should respect different publishing cultures and traditions being a global, truly global service, not primarily exclude, but rather facilitate and assist smaller journals to come into the flow, while at the same time promoting standards. We have introduced the seal of uh, approval for open access journals for the sort of, uh, to promote best practice, and it has uh, the requirements listed here, DOIs, article level metadata, archiving, CC BY, <coughs> also is retain copyright and deposit policy. We think we are on track, uh, lots of work ahead. Uh, <coughs> sorry, we will continue to contribute to the momentum of open access publishing by promoting standards carefully, but without losing the global view. We will collaborate, uh, and I think this will benefit all open access publishers. It is a major effort to transform the DOAJ We'll only be able to do this if we get more fi financial support from the community. So this is an appeal to you to support the DOAJ, like many libraries do, many library consortia, and many open access publishers. Thank you. <laughs>